Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Okay. I have been working on the omega-3 conundrum for over 20 years. I've been combing the research to, fry, to try to understand why there's this assumption that uh, ALA does not convert to DHA at uh, it's sufficiently enough to supply the brain. Uh, I have not taken preformed DHA in 40 years. And if that were the case, I would have severe dysfunction, neurological dysfunction, brain dysfunction all over the place. And it's not the case. So I'm, I'm living proof. And yes, that's just an N1, one person, anecdotal, get it. But I knew that this had to be wrong. I just didn't have the research to show why this was so wrong. Okay, so what's the premise? The premise is, hey, ALA does not convert to DHA in a sufficient way. Where did that assumption come from? The assumption came from looking at red blood cells or the plasma. At first, they looked at blood plasma and said, hey, wait a minute, we're only seeing about a 1% to 3% conversion of ALA down to DHA in the bloodstream. It must not be sufficient enough to convert enough DHA. Then there was this enzyme theory. Oh, that we don't produce enough of the enzymes to actually convert ALA to DHA based on this assumption, looking at the conversion of ALA to DHA in the blood. Now that's the important part here because for the last 50 years, we've assumed that this observation of the conversion of ALA to DHA in the blood was exactly the same thing that was happening in the liver, in the brain, in other parts of the body that must be the same that we now know was flat out wrong and i finally have the research to prove it and i'm proving it in a dramatic fashion not only that was the omega-3 index wrong about omega-3 based on its assumptions yes when you take preformed omega-3, like from fish oil or from animal products, preformed meaning that DHA was formed outside of the body, right? Another animal formed the DHA, just like we do. <laughs> okay, so we take ALA and we can convert it to DHA. The question was, based on the observations that ALA was not converting well in the blood, that the assumption was it wasn't converting that well throughout the rest of the body. Okay, this study that I'm going to show you will prove without a doubt that assumption was not only incorrect, it was actually telling us the opposite, that actually higher blood DHA from preformed sources like algae or fish oil or animal products that DHA formed outside the body was in fact increasing red blood cell DHA. That part is true. What we now know though is that that DHA was a specific type of DHA called triglycerol, triacyl glycerol DHA or TAG DHA for short. So TAG DHA does in fact increase red blood cell DHA levels. Okay, that assumption, so what's wrong with that? The thing is the brain almost mostly entirely uses LPC or lysophosphatidylcholine bound DHA. And that is created in the liver. So now we see that fish oil and algae oil is tag DHA, and it all gets soaked up into the red blood cells, and none of it goes to the brain. 
Okay, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's go ahead and put the study up here so you can follow along at home. Look up this study. It's a 2020 study, so it's fairly recent. And what they did is looked up and said, okay, we know without a doubt, all the way back since the 1960s, that increasing blood levels of DHA or increasing brain levels, rather, of DHA increased brain-derived nerve growth factor, or BDNF for short. Okay, so brain-derived BDNF is really cool chemical. It stimulates neurogenesis. It stimulates healing and repairing. It protects our brain cells. This is where a lot of the assumed benefits of DHA actually come from. It's not the DHA actually doing all the magic tricks. It's that it's stimulating or being used to produce BDNF, and it's BDNF that is giving all these positive brain health benefits. Okay, so we know that when DHA reaches the brain, it stimulates, upregulates BDNF. So let's look at what the study says. Oops, that's the wrong one. Don't. All right, let's just actually take a look at the picture because the picture says it even more strongly than I could ever look. Okay, so here's the first graph. You look, okay, tag DHA, the kind of DHA that is found in fish oil, that is found in animal products, that is found in algae DHA is represented as the black dots. And you can see them at the bottom there on the left-hand side of the graph. At the LPC DHA, which is created by our human body when we take precursors like, like ALA and SDA, when we shuttle them, when we consume them, they go to our liver where the liver converts them into LPC DHA. LPC DHA is the red dots you see on the screen. So the higher the amount of LPC, the higher the amount of brain DHA, the amount of DHA actually in the brain. As you can see, the tag DHA, the black dots, are practically zero. In some cases, even negative. You see on the right-hand side, it's slightly negatively correlated. It's meaning it actually reduced the amount of DHA in the brain. Not even, did not get any there. It actually reduced DHA in the brain. So what's happening to this DHA that we're taking with fish oil and algae oil? It's being beta oxidized, basically just burned up for calories. That's right, it's circulating in our blood and is not getting to the brain. Wow, how did we get this so absolutely wrong? Okay, what I'm gonna show you next is even more disturbing. Oh, let me take down that one comment. All right, there we go. Okay, so you see the top graph, the higher the red dot, LPC, which is created in the liver from ALA and precursors, right? The plant sourced uh, precursors are going to the liver and being converted into LPC, the red dots, and then going and getting soaked up by the brain, lots of it in the brain. You're seeing actual increase of DHA in the brain with the increase of LPC DHA. Now you see the black dots, the higher on the bottom two graphs, you see the higher the amount of black dots, which is the fish oil or the algae or the animal sourced tag DHA, the lower the amount of actual DHA reaching the brain. <laughs> Now, this is going to take a little explaining because this seems really counterintuitive. It means the more DHA that you are taking in a preformed state, like from fish or algae, the less you are actually getting in the brain. DHA supplementation preformed from fish or algae, decreasing DHA levels in the brain, not increasing them decreasing them. 
They're increasing them in the blood. Oh, well, that's great. Everybody was measuring the blood. Hey, let's take a blood test. We'll even call it the omega-3 index. That's what we call this blood test for measuring it. Yes, it's soaked up by the red blood cells, but it's not getting to the brain. As a matter of fact, it's not only not getting to the brain, it's decreasing the amount getting to the brain. Now, how the heck could that be true? <laughs> So let me explain. Let me take this down so I can talk with you. Okay. The brain, the body has a way of making sure you don't get too much DHA or too little DHA. So it takes ALA. I'll go ahead and put this picture up here. It, when you consume ALA from plants, it will go through our circulatory system and then either go to the liver where it's converted to LPC DHA so it can go and be absorbed in the brain or it is stored in adipose tissue to hang out and wait until you need a conversion of ALA to DHA for the brain or other tissues where it can be used immediately. That's why you don't see ALA converting to anything else but EPA, pretty much, ALA and SDA converting to EPA. Let's go ahead and show you that chart. Okay, so ALA converts to steridonic acid or SDA, then ETA, and then down to EPA. Now, these first four levels of conversion happen very quickly and easily and abundantly with ALA, especially if it's ALA-SDA combination, because SDA converts at a much higher rate to EPA in the blood than ALA does. This is why iron flower is so much more effective, about four to five times more effective than your typical sources of ALA, such as flax and chia and hemp because of the high SDA content of ahi flower. That's what makes it so unique and makes it so much more effective, especially if you have a genetic predisposition like APOE4 or other SNPs. SNPs are uh, 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 variants, gene variants, where the body does not produce as much of the very first one right here, which is called Delta 60 saturase enzyme. Some people have uh, gene variants that don't produce this enzyme, so they get a little bit poor conversion of the first step. It's called the rate limiting step from ALA to SDA. But if you have a plant like eye flower with high amounts of SDA, you can circumvent that. You can make sure that even if you have that gene variant, you're getting enough that will convert down to EPA and then convert down even further to DHA in the liver okay all right so now we see very clearly that the omega-3 index was wrong about dha based on that assumption that dha in the blood meant dha in the brain it does not as a matter of fact it's what they call inversely negatively correlated meaning the higher amount of preformed DHA from fish or algae that you take, the lower amount is actually reaching the brain. Let me explain why that could be possible. Because LPC DHA is going to the brain and the body is set up to convert its own amount. When the body sees high amounts of DHA in the bloodstream, it says, whoa, We've got a lot of DHA in the blood. How did that get there? Let's stop the production, the conversion of all of the rest of the precursors to DHA in its LPC format, the kind that actually gets to the brain. So by taking a DHA supplement from algae or fish, you can actually be sending the signal to, to put the brakes on the conversion of LPC, ALA and SDA to LPC DHA, which is the actual ones that's used by the brain. So by taking a supplement, not only are you not getting it to the brain where it says it's just being soaked up and used by the blood cells, you're actually sending a signal to inhibit the conversion of ALA, SDA, EPA to DHA because the brain sees it's too much by the appearance, this false appearance of DHA in the bloodstream. So our system is set up to say, hey, wait a minute. I have this full-blown system. Why is DHA all the way here at the bottom? 
so that the body can best regulate it by turning on genes at every single one of these steps and turning off genes when we don't need it. By dumping DHA in here down on the bottom of the bloodstream, the body says, whoa, stop with the conversion rate. We've got too much of it. But it's the wrong kind of DHA. It's tag DHA. Okay, so let's go back to the notes and take a look at what we're finding here. Okay, so this study, actually, uh, the potential role of hepatic lipase. Hepatic lipase is the enzyme in the liver, hepatic, and uh, the accretion of DHA by the brain. So this is where we see the precursors, ALA, SDA, from plants coming to the liver, increasing hepatic lipase, which then converts to LPC DHA so that the brain can take it up in the brain. Okay, so let's see what that study says. Let's show. Come on, show. There we go. <laughs> These results suggest that liver-produced hepatic lipase activity may be the major source for the generation of LPC DHA in the plasma. It means once the body it, produces it and puts it in the plasma for transport into the brain. So this is the pathway that our body uses. This is why ALA does not convert in the blood. It converts in the liver, and we're not looking at it there. We were looking in the wrong place for the conversion this whole time. We were looking at the blood. We even call it the omega-3 index, and the blood is only an indicator of how much is actually getting into the red blood cells. And the red blood cells are only taking up tag DHA, which is not even used by the brain. Do you see how ass backwards this is? How did scientists get this so fundamentally, so profoundly wrong? The opposite is true. The higher the amounts that found in the bloodstream, it is actually an indicator of how much is not getting to the brain. And then we've been basing and telling people, oh, you need to increase your blood DHA, that you can't get enough from plant omega-3, when just the opposite is the truth. The truth is the body does not want that preformed DHA in the bloodstream. It's basically useless except being used by the blood, red blood cells, and the vast majority of it just gets burned up as, as energy, beta oxidized. It's not even utilized. What a waste of all these fish oil and algae oil supplements that people are taking for no other reason than increasing their calorie load from fats. This is awful. Now, I take it back. DHA does, tag DHA does have some benefits to it, small benefits. That's not a concern though, because the body can use other sources of DHA too. Okay, so let's look at what the next one says. Our laboratory has demonstrated that LPC DHA enriches the brain efficiently. Got it. And that LPC DHA comes from the ALA SDA from plants and EPA into the liver where it's converted bound to that uh, lysophosphatidylcholine so that it can now cross the blood brain barrier and get into the brain and enrich the brain with LPC DHA. So our laboratory demonstrated that LPC DHA enriches the brain efficiently. Whereas, and here's the big part, Free DHA, which is also found in some fish and uh, also animal products, or the tri triacylglycerol DHA or tag DHA at equivalent doses as LPC have virtually no effect on brain DHA. I'm going to emphasize that again. That fish oil that you are taking, that algae oil that you are taking, has virtually no effect on brain DHA. Boom, there it is. I've been saying that plants have it right all along, that we have a system for converting these, these precursor forms from plants. When you take a pre-made form from another animal, it's the wrong form. It's tag DHA, 
and it's not increasing brain DHA at all. Okay, let's go on because I want you to understand this is not me cherry picking studies. Here's a 2016 study. ALA is sufficiently converted to DHA to increase bioactive lipids derived from DHA. So here's a whole nother pathway. So when you have elevated levels of DHA, more of it will break down into metabolites called oxylipins. Now these oxylipins have very powerful effects all of their own, different from the DHA in its whole state or even its LPC or tag state. So the body can break these metabolites down into oxylipins. So what this study is showing, and I'll put it up here, consistent with many prior studies, providing higher ALA from plants. ALA only comes from plants, right? That is the essential omega-3. Higher ALA resulted in higher phospholipid ALA. This is the kind that can, that can go across the blood-brain barrier and into the brain and DHA concentrations, but they were only higher. The DHA concentrations were only higher in the liver. That's because that's where that is being made. The LPC DHA is being made in the liver and it's not in the serum. There it is. DHA concentrations. When you increase ALA, DHA concentrations were only higher in the liver because it's being converted to LPC DHA, which gets to the brain. The tag DHA from fish and algae do not get to the brain. And this is why it's not showing up in the serum, the blood because that is not where the conversion to LPC, the good kind that actually supports brain health, that's not where it's coming from. Okay, let's take it a step further. That blood brain barrier in the brain, it's called, I'll put it up on the screen. Okay, this study is 2023 study. Got me really excited initially because I saw this this factor. So there's a little gate on our brain cells in our tissues in the brain that actually open up and transport. So it says, knock, 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 I'm an LPC DHA. Great. Come on in. I'll open up the transporter. Now this transporter is called, I'll put it up on the screen, MFS D2A. So this is the transport mechanism that allows DHA into our brain. So MFS D2DA, D2A, the transport, the uh, oh, DHA transport, typically transports long chain unsaturated acids, fatty acids, including DHA and ALA. Bingo. Okay, now we're seeing something else here. ALA and DHA are the only ones that are in crossing into the brain. Pretty cool because they can be both combine to, as you see right there, lysophosphatidylcholine or LPC bound ALA and DHA. Bingo. All right. So that transporter says, knock, knock, knock. We're tagged DHA. Bye-bye. You're not getting in here. Knock, knock, knock. We're LPC bound DHA. Come on in. Let's load them up. Okay, why is that important? All right, so this 2023 study shows that when there is an inhibition of that transporter, you can get serious brain development dysfunction. So what would cause that MFS2, uh, MFSD2A, transported to not function properly. There it is on the screen. The study found that high fat diet caused lower levels of DHA in the brains than a low fat diet. Why is that? <laughs> According to a study published in the Nature Communications, dietary, that means eating what you eat, Saturated fat, which almost entirely comes from animal products. Yeah, peanuts, coconut have a little bit of saturated fat, 
but you're not eating those for every meal, hopefully. The vast majority, 80 to 90 percent of saturated fat comes from animal products. So dietary, that means what you eat, saturated fat, predominantly from animals, impairs DHA transport into the brain. The study found that a high fat diet caused lower levels of DHA in the brains compared to those on a low fat diet. Plant-based diets are generally low fat diets. Whole food plant-based diets are generally much lower in fat and definitely much lower in saturated fat than animal-based diets. So not only is the fish oil and the animal source DHA or the algae source DHA not getting to the brain because it's the wrong kind, it's inhibiting the body by a negative feedback loop saying, oh, wait a minute, we've got too much DHA. So you're overloading the body with DHA and fooling the body into thinking it has the DHA it needs and it doesn't and actually lowering the amount of LPC, the good DHA that can be used by the brain. And then on top of that, that same animal-based diet loaded with saturated fat is actually blocking the DHA from getting into the brain at all. Oh my God, this should clearly show human beings should be consuming a plant exclusive diet and that will increase the amount of DHA getting to the brain, getting to the liver, converting to LPC DHA and uh, increasing the amount of DHA in the brain. So the plants have it right and the consuming of of animal DHA, of preformed DHA supplements like fish oil and, and algae oil could actually decrease the amount of DHA in the brain. Okay, but it gets better. This study, 2014 study, curcumin boosts DHA in the brain. Implications for prevention of anxiety, because we know that we increase ALA and or DHA. Both of them have positive effects on anxiety, on depression in the brain. Okay, let's see what this study has to say. We report that curcumin enhances the synthesis of DHA from its precursors, like ALA found or SDA found in plants, alpha linoleic acid. Okay. So curcumin actually enhances or increases the synthesis of DHA from ALA right there in the study and elevates enzymes involved in the synthesis of DHA, such as FADS2. This is a very particular enzyme that uh, increases the rate at which um, the body can produce DHA from ALA as well as elongase in both liver, remember it's important, that's where the conversion to LPC that our brain can use, and in brain tissues. So that ALA that is crossing the blood brain barrier can actually be converted in brain tissue to DHA on the spot. So your body can store ALA here in the brain, convert it to DHA if needed, or use ALA also for brain health. ALA helps with lots of different things, okay, in the brain, including re uh, reducing depression rates even more significantly than DHA. Taken together, these data suggest that curcumin enhances DHA synthesis, resulting in elevated brain DHA content. Okay, so now we see that plants, which produce these amazing polyphenols like those in curcumin, are actually propelling, accelerating, initiating, increasing the enzymes, increasing the conversion rates. So the higher the amount of plants you're eating, the better, more efficient, more effective you are at converting this ALA and SDA and EPA into LPC DHA for the brain. You know, it's, it's amazing when we see through the misinterpretations of data and see them for what they're actually doing, listen to what the body is actually doing, we have a real clear pathway. So just to recap, 
ALA does not convert to DHA because it converts to the proper form, LPC DHA, that can actually be used by the brain. Fish oil and algae oil and animal product DHA actually does not use by the brain. Let me, let me put this picture up one more time because it's just so stark. There is the fish oil DHA in the bottom at the black dots. There is the LPC created by the liver from omega-3 sources from plants, the red dots at the top. This is how much it's increasing BDNF, that wonderful chemical that's doing all these wonderful things for our brain, increasing DHA brain levels. You can see that that algae and fish oil is not increasing DHA in the brain at all. We had this whole thing backwards. We assumed because of the blood measurements that this DHA, look, you can see it here. The DHA on the bottom half, you see the black dots? Those are DHA getting into the erythrocytes, the blood cells. So when you consume that DHA, sure enough, red blood cell levels shoot up. But look at the red dots, the dots that are actually getting into the brain. They go down. That means that is an indicator that the higher the amount of DHA in the blood, the actual lower amount of DHA is actually getting into the brain. This whole time we were thinking we we're taking fish oil and we had proof because the blood levels were getting so high. The exact opposite is true. And not only that, when you combine this in an animal-based diet, you are getting a blockade of, of events happening. You're getting too much DHA in the bloodstream, tricking the body to say, stop producing, stop converting, ALA and it's the rest of the precursors into LPC because the brain thinks it's got enough by having all that DHA circulating in the bloodstream. It's called a negative feedback loop. The body regulates according to how much. If it's got a lot, it stops producing. If it's got too little, it starts producing. So by dumping DHA into the bloodstream in the wrong form, in tag form, one, it doesn't get to the brain. Two, it tells the body to stop converting the LPC, which does get to the brain. And then three, the animal-based diets can actually shut down the uh, accretion, the transport into the brain. All the way across the board, plants win, plants are better, plants are superior, plants improve DHA uptake into the brain, plants improve DHA conversion in the liver, plants improve the amount of ALA in the system, Plants do not downregulate like DHA, preformed DHA does. Downregulates our body's ability to convert the precursors into the proper LPC form to get to the brain. Wow, did we have this wrong, brutally wrong. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are making a lot of money on selling fish and algae. They're not going to like this. They're going to try to debunk it, I am sure, but the data is overwhelming. It's right there. And it's not only just a little bit, it's directly inversely correlated. The higher the brain DHA, the lower the amount in the blood. The higher the amount in the blood, the lower the amount in the brain. Direct inverse correlation, direct negative correlation. <laughs> it doesn't get any more clear than that. And it's clear now why ALA does not convert in the bloodstream. That's not the proper place to do it. It needs to go to the liver to be converted to LPC DHA so it can get into the brain. ALA is superior to fish oil, superior to algae oil. And the ALA-SDA combination is superior to ALA. This is why I'm so excited about ahi flower. 
the richest source of ALA and SDA of any plant on the planet. We have the best source for enriching our body, our tissues, our liver, our brain with the proper LPC, DHA, getting there through the liver. The omega-3 index was wrong. The blood measurements actually tell the opposite of what we thought was it. We thought higher blood DHA meant higher brain DHA. The opposite is the truth. The higher the amount of tagged DHA in the red blood cells actually is an indicator of a reduced amount of LPC, the good, the proper form, the form that gets into our brain through the transport. It's taken me over 20 years to collect all this data to finally have a cohesive story to tell. It's so important that we get this out. Two to three trillion fish are being killed every year because people believe this falsehood. People believe that fish is good for the brain. It's not. Okay, there is room for disagreement in this conversation. There is room for discussion, but please let's have this discussion because we now have overwhelming evidence that the pathway that the body prefers, including the conversion in the liver and the transport into the brain, are superior when on a plant-based diet. Now, you still need to get enough of the omega-3s in their ALA and SDA form to properly feed the body and nourish the body what it needs. You still need a significant amount to make that happen. That's why I believe in supplementation because I'm not gonna bank just on my food uh, to say, hey, some days I'm getting it, some days I'm not. Well, my brain doesn't care. If, <laughs> it just says, wait a minute, I need that for functioning. So I'm going to make sure I'm getting my brain what it needs for functioning. That's why I believe in supplementation, but supplementation with the plant nutrient that works with our body and its own preferred natural pathway and its abilities I am actually consuming more polyphenols, polyphenol-rich diet from plants. Remember, plants are the only source of polyphenols. Plants are the only source of ALA. Remember I was talking to you about uh, oxylipins. Well, we show that ox uh, ALA increases oxylipins of these plant uh, DHA metabolites. Well, there are oxylipins unique to ALA. And if you look at the conversion chart, this is a unidirectional conversion chart. So only plants will provide ALA and all the rest of them through conversion in the body. If you consume DHA, because it's a unidirectional, there is no retro conversion there happening or not in significant amounts anyway, you're only getting the DHA. You're only getting the oxylipins for DHA. You're not getting the EPA oxylipins. You're not getting the SDA oxylipins. You're not getting the ALA oxylipins. All of these precursors are beneficial. You're not getting the ALA, the SDA, or the uh, ETA. These things have been shown to have profound effects on the brain and brain health. Why on earth would you take a supplement that gives you one out of six <laughs> of the omega-3s that our bodies use? Actually, even seven if you include TTA. Why? It makes no sense whatsoever. The reason why is because we've been sold a bill of goods from the fish industry to sell more fish, to sell more fish oil, to sell algae. And it's wrong. This is so important because almost 3 trillion animals lose their life every single year based on this falsehood. We know now plants are better. Plants work with the body. Plants provide more health benefits than fish oil can ever supply. I really want to do whatever it takes to get this information out there. It's not just these group of studies that I'm talking about. 
I have literally hundreds of studies that I've been citing throughout my videos. Please take a look at some of the other ones that I've talked about, talking about the MFS2DA and the transport, talking about the conversion rates and where they're happening. A great study came out from Toronto, University of Toronto by Adam Methrow. I had the pleasure to meet with him and talk with him. And his study out of the University of Toronto found that whole body synthesis of DHA, especially in the liver of ALA are 50 times higher than previously estimated in the plasma, the blood. 50 times. How could we be so far off? How could we be buy into this notion, bank on this notion that ALA must be converted in the blood just because we saw DHA being utilized or absorbed in the blood? That's just so wrong. We now know. Now, it's it's taken because you can't just split people open and, and see <laughs> living people open and see how much DHA is being uh, produced in the bodies. Unfortunately, this was done on, on mice, but now we have the data showing the rates. Now, some people say, oh, but that's an animal study. Well, animals produce the exact same enzymes, produce the exact same uh, conversion pathway. The pathway is the same. It's homogenous. So that's that's a non-issue. What we see in animals, we see in humans. 50 times the amount of ALA is being converted more in tissues. We see now that, that ALA can be converted directly in the brain, and we know the enzymatic pathway for that. We can see the vast majority of it gets converted in the liver through hepatic lipase and through enzyme conversion there in the liver. So they can be converted to the proper amount, the LPC DHA, so it can get to the brain, whereas fish oil does not do this. You can see ALA itself getting to the brain. This is the amount of ALA reaching the hippocampus and the cortex in the brain. So the brain is actually taking up LPC created, bonded, so this ALA will go to the liver, attach to LPC, the lysophosphatidylcholine, so it can cross the blood-brain barrier and increase the rates of ALA in the brain as a neuroprotective, as a neurogenerative, as an increaser of BDNF. If you look at the top of this chart, BDNF expression goes up when there's ALA in the brain, goes up when there's DHA in the brain you can see the similarity. If you are only taking DHA, you are not getting ALA. You are depriving the brain of a second source, the, the two fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids that get to the brain and increase BDNF, brain-derived nerve growth factor, which supports neurogenesis, the creation of ner new nerves, the healing and the repairing of nerve tissues in the brain. ALA is there in the brain, along with DHA, if it's made in the liver. Then ALA can be converted in the brain to DHA if necessary. So a backup system. And if you're just doing DHA or eating animal products, you're not getting that ALA, not in sufficient amounts. And that's not helping out the brain. ALA superior, ALA SDA combination, superior to fish oil, superior to algae oil. We need to get this information out there because so many people have bought into this fear based on an incorrect assumption that ALA doesn't convert only because we were only looking in the bloodstream where that tag DHA, that DHA that is useless for the brain is being accumulated. How did we get this so, so wrong? I need your help. If you're listening, please share, please like, please share this link wherever you see somebody talking about fish oil, wherever you see people talking about algae oil, 
We need to get this information out there because people are one, wasting their money, two, could actually be in, in unknowingly decreasing the amount of DHA getting to their brain. And three, not taking the proper source that could be enriching their brain with DHA. I do this because I want to help people. I want people to live optimal lives. Look, I was given a gift, a rechance at a, a life after I was suicidal for many years, suffering from depression. Somebody helped me with a breakthrough that was so intense, I dedicated the rest of my life to trying to help other people. I want you to live optimal health. This is not being, this is not me saying, oh, I'm, I'm vegan and I need to prove that plants are right. No, I understand our physiology and want you to work with your physiology to have the best health benefits for your brain, for your heart, for your kidneys, for your liver, for your whole body so that you can live the best life you possibly can. And to do that, you need to know what's going on in the body. You need to have the correct information of what's going on in the body. And I'm showing you that. And that's why I bring you these studies every Thursday. It's because I want you to know what I know so that you can apply these things. You can share these things so that more people can benefit from this information. Please, if you, if you, know anybody like Rich Roll or, or any of the big players out there that would like to have me on a podcast to talk about this. I've spent the last 20 years of my life accumulating this research and can answer the questions that anybody has. I really want to help people. I really want to help the planet. And I truly am saddened by the trillions of fish that are killed every year because people have the wrong assumption about fish oil and the brain. It's so sad that that many lives are extinguished for something that's actually not doing what people think it's doing. Please help me uh, correct this. Okay, this was a very emotional, very powerful one with me. I waited for this day. I knew it was right. I just did not have the data. And now we have the data. We have the science that pretty, pretty clearly shows plants had it right all along, that human beings are herbivores and that we are better served by eating a plant exclusive diet, by getting our nutrients from plants. Healthier brains, healthier lives, less disease states by consuming a whole food plant-based diet. That's what I want to share with you. Please, again, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, leave me questions or comments, happy to answer them. This is a passion for me, as you can tell. I want to thank Greg Cumberford, Andrew Hebert over at NCI. I want to thank professors Vazanet and Metherell for their incredible work and in many of the studies that I cite, including the uh, Professor Matherell's uh, slide that I presented here. Incredible work by the folks at NCI and Ahiflower. Thank you, Andrew, for all the research, for growing Ahiflower when nobody else believed in it, nobody else was doing it. I'm proud to be such a, a you know, proponent of one of the greatest miracles of the plant kingdom that is here to help us improve our health. Thank you for watching. We'll be back again next week. Sorry about the, the Robert Cheek interview not happening. Robert had a family emergency. Um, my thoughts and my heart's with you, Robert. If you're out there, we're hoping for speed healing and hope to reschedule and have you on to talk about your amazing book, which I really enjoyed going through. And I've got some great questions for you. So do stay tuned. We're gonna have lots of good guests, more research as I find it, I'll bring it to you so that you are empowered with the information to make the best choices for your health, for you, your family, people who care about you, those you love. Thanks for, thanks for joining me.